Hello, welcome to Choco Millionaire. Today we're going to talk about common law partner relationships and how this can play out when it comes to immigration applications. Okay, some of you may also uh, be more familiar with terms like boyfriend, girlfriend relationships, and you're wondering, look, Choco, uh, if I'm in relationship with this person. Um, we're boyfriend, we're, we're girlfriend, we're fiance, um, we've been living for a long time. Is there a way I can actually come along with him or her when they are applying to come to Canada? Or after they've also moved to Canada as students or uh, work permit holders or uh, permanent residents, or even if they became citizens, can I still join my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my fiance or fiance or that person I've been with for a long time. Welcome to Choco Millennium. And if you're enjoying this, I want to encourage you to do your best to also follow me on YouTube because this video, video is going to be actually available in a much more edited version where I kind of will insert, I'm going to be putting in, you know, displays of like some things that I think will help you, like graphics and documents that I think will make it even more easier for you. So as you're watching this, make sure you hop on to my YouTube channel and you also follow me there. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and make sure you're getting every live update from me. To start off, I'd like to mention that I am not in any capacity an immigration consultant in Canada, not at all. I'm also not an immigration lawyer. I'm no expert when it comes to immigration. Whatever I share with you is based on general information which you can also sort yourself and sometimes I live experiences of other people. So be sure not to confuse me with an agent, an immigration lawyer, or a consultant, okay? Whatever information you get on this platform, be sure to do your due diligence. All right, let's get straight into it. The most common form of relationship, which is basically conjugal relationship, which people use when it comes to traveling to places or countries like Canada, is actually what we call legal marriages or civic marriages okay so there's a situation where somebody could actually go and register a marriage at you know the, the the with the authorities of the country or within the region where they live so i'm from ghana i like to use some examples from ghana for example okay when i got married we, we got married traditionally first okay by doing an engagement and then we had to do a church wedding just because that satisfies our belief as christians bringing our marriage to 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 before god and then beyond that, we had to make sure that the government recognized a marriage. So we, we had to go register with the metropolitan authorities for them to also issue us a marriage certificate confirming that these two individuals have actually duly been registered as couples under the law. In some places, your traditional marriage is also actually legally recognized by the authority. Now, some people may not even do a traditional marriage. They could just go and register the marriage. Uh, before maybe families or friends, and that is still okay, or witnesses, and that is still okay. Whatever the situation is, the key point here is that the most popular form of, um, you know, um, registering a union between a couple will be where you use a marriage certificate with some kind of proof that you are indeed legally married to such person. But did you also know that there are other forms of relationship that are also conjugal relationships that are duly recognized by Canadian government or the Canadian immigration. You may have noticed that when you're filling out your immigration forms and you get to the section where you have to ask answer questions about marital status, there are a bunch of options there, conjugal relationships. You see common law as well, isn't it? So today we want to talk about common law. Now, to begin with, somebody might be thinking, does common law mean my boyfriend or my girlfriend? Sorry to disappoint you. When it comes to the Canadian immigration or the government, they do not legally recognize what we call boyfriend and girlfriend relationships. Just from the perspective of using the term, all right? So you're dating somebody that's my boyfriend, all right? I'm dating somebody, courtship, whatever, that's my girlfriend. That term is more of a term um, which will play out in an informal environment or setting. 
But when it comes to dealing with the Canadian law, they do not actually have terms like boyfriend and girlfriend. They actually go strictly with terms that have legal connotations. The version of that is what I will be calling common law or what they call common law. When the Canadian government or immigration refers to common law, they are talking about a relationship between two individuals, normally from the age of 15 or above, okay, which actually comes with some form of commitment. It could be physical commitment. It could be emotional commitment. It could be economic or financial commitment. It could be a social commitment. And this can actually be proven by a cohabitation. What does this grammar actually mean? It simply means if you are in a relationship with someone and you can prove that you cohabit for at least one year, or if you can prove that you and the person have been living in the same residence or address or same house or room or apartment, if you like to call it that, or flat, for one year, minimum one year, and beyond that cohabitation, you can also prove that we have a shared commitment around so many things or a couple of things. Financially, we have a shared commitment. Emotionally, there is some kind of commitment. Physically, there is some kind of commitment. In fact, some people will live in a sexual commitment that we've been together, we've been sexually involved living together for at least one year. If you can prove all of this, you may not need to actually add a marriage certificate if you don't plan on marrying in order to bring your partner or sponsor your partner to come join you in Canada as somebody who is visiting or coming on a work permit or coming in as a sponsored permanent resident. The rationale or the context behind this was initially something that was designed just for Canadian permanent residents and citizens to make it easy for them to actually um, enjoy certain benefits when it comes to their partners who they may not have intentions of marrying, but then they are living together with them. But as time went on, this got a global use when it comes to immigration, so people were using it. In fact, the first time I saw somebody actually use this was a Ghanaian. The person actually used this. The person was involved in a common law relationship with the now wife. Now they're married. They, they're together. But at the time, they had this common law relationship going on uh, in Ghana, meaning that they lived together for at least a year, and they even had a child. Yes, they even had a child coming out of that relationship. And then one of the partners came to Canada to study. So these people had no marriage certificate. They didn't go to court. They didn't go to no wedding. They just happened to have a child, and they've been living together for long. The man was actually also sending money to the partner back home. He was able to apply to bring the partner to join him in Canada without the typical marriage stuff. And I thought that was interesting. Now, just recently, some people have also asked me, Choco, can you also do videos on this? Like, we have boyfriends or fiancés and stuff back home. We don't really plan on going back home to just when marry or we are not really interested in that conversation yet. But is it possible? And then it made me quickly look at some recent situations where some of our own friends who are African brothers and sisters were also able to utilize this same concept of common law to actually file for prominent residency for their partners. I actually know at least five of our own Ghanaians who were living with their girlfriends in the same apartment, lived together for at least one year, never married, no married, no wedding, no marriage certificate, and yet were able to file for permanent residency for those partners. You can call them fiancés. And they still got a PR. So even if you are living in Canada, this could be something you need to hear. 
Now, this could also be very, very useful to somebody who lives in countries that are visa exempted or visa free for Canada. You live in countries like, you know, in European countries where you don't need a visa to, you are exempted from applying for visa and providing your bank statement and blah, blah, blah. All you do is to apply for what we call the electronic travel authorization, ETA. If you have a common law partner, you could also be utilizing this to add value or so have them join you over here. If you're, enjoying, if you're enjoying this video already, make sure you're hitting the like button, drop me your comments there, invite your friends and make sure you share them as well. And remember, I'm going to be posting this on YouTube as well with a lot more details and screen stuff there. So be sure to look for Chuck Melanie on YouTube. All right, let's go straight into the details here. So when you are filling out your visa form and you get to the marital status question there, if you're in a common law, you have to choose common law. Remember, the definition for a common law means you ought to be able to prove that you and that partner have lived for at least one year, preferably at least a year before you came, you and the person were together, sharing the same apartment, sharing the same house, almost as though you're married. You know what I mean? You're enjoying everything like you're married. You just haven't decided to go to that next level of, you know, putting a certificate and a ring and whatever you, depending on your culture or your belief. You have to prove that. Without proving that, you are completely out of the equation. So I don't want somebody coming here asking questions. Okay, you can, you can ask a question, but I'm not going to respond to that. Oh, I've been with my boyfriend or fiance for three months. We've been together for six months. We've been together for seven months. That, that's not what he said. He said one year. So if you ask that question, I'm going to respond, right? You can ask it, but I'm going to respond because I've just answered it in it. It has to be a minimum one year of a proven cohabitation. What is cohabitation? You and that person have been living in the shared accommodation, shared facility for minimum one year. And the intention towards that is for conjugal relationship, which may involve sex as well. Let me say you go. Carry on a shower in lock for your room for one year. I don't say with the intention of living like a couple. That'd be all to the talk. <laughs> Long way to tell you, I go a shower with them. They do things for one year. So they come to house every day. That was too good qualified. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right. There, there has to be some sense of fidelity or commitment or feelings here. So let me read out some of them. I'm reading this straight from the Canadian Immigration's website when it comes to assessing a conjugal relationship. We to say you can hear me. Can you still hear me? Yeah, you're good, right? All right. Shelled shelter. Shared shelter, which means accommodation. Now, how can you prove this? You can prove your shared accommodation with a lease agreement, tenancy agreement. You have a tenancy agreement with your name and your partner's name on it. If you live in Europe or in some countries in Asia or Southern, Afri Southern Africa or Mauritius or, you know, all those countries, it's much easier to prove that. In other countries, people don't necessarily get lease agreements from their landlords. They just pay and then they move it. Hey, but hey, if you are going to be using it, you better make sure you have a lease agreement to prove. A lease agreement signed by your landlord with your signature on it, your partner's signature, both of you must be on it showing that you've been living there for at least one year. Now, you can also show proof of ownership of an asset, such as a house, a property that you guys live in as evidence. In other words, you and your partner live in this house because you own it. Both of you have your names on the mortgage. You are not legally married, but you both have an asset like this. It has your name, or you bought a property. It has your name. In fact, you could even go on and even add a lot more if you do have. Maybe you purchase a piece of land together, property, or you bought a car which has your name. You could even go an extra mash by showing them a financial document that also binds the two of you together. Could be a joint account. You've been operating a joint account for at least a year. Your partner's name is on it, your name is on it. That is also proof of a shared financial commitment. So assets, lease agreement, ownership of property or house or other assets. Ownership of a car that has both of you, your name on it, 
because you chose to do it like that. Or anything you think has your name on it and can prove your relationship could be a plus. Now, in countries where your main form of receiving mails is to your address, this could be a plus to you. For example, in Canada, our letters get sent to our home address. Our bills get sent to our home address. Your phone bill is addressed to your house. It has your name on it. It has your address on it. You know, your water bill, your, your hydro bill, what we call hydro, which is electricity bill, utility bills, internet bills, they may have your name and your address on it. So if you, if you live in a country where you have the opportunity to put all this on your record of information, it could be a very, very, very good source of evidence to prove your common law. Remember, things in common. That is why they call it common law. Things in common. Yet, with a touch of something like a marriage, not legally registered. You see that? Lease, mortgage, assets, utilities, a lease for a year, showing proof that you two have been involved. Joint account, bank account, really good. Now, if you're watching me right now and you have a common law partner outside of Canada, you may be even looking for different creative ways to actually show more proof of your common law. It could be monies that you've been sending or remitting or transferring to your partner. Have you been using a money transfer app or company or your bank to make transactions? Do you know you could actually request a statement from your bank or the app you've been using to send money that, hey, I'd like you to send me a statement of all transactions I sent to my common law partner or this individual whose name is Efia Schwarzenegger. It's my partner. Please send me a statement with record of record of every single money I've transferred to her on your official letterhead. Mr. Westing, Mr. Money, Mr. You get that statement? It shows proof of a financial relationship between you and the person you've been sending money to them. In fact, this was one of the things that that person who had a common law partner in Ghana was able to use to get the approved visa approved for the spouse, for, for, for the common law partner. I hope I gave you some ideas on that one there. Different ways to prove your common law relationship. For some people, they may even have a child involved, meaning they may not be married, but they have a child. I know that's very common, right? For a lot of relationships, may have children here and there. That's even an easy one. The child bears your name. The child bears somehow the mother's name. Your common law partner's name is on the birth certificate. Your name as a father is somewhere also on the child's name. That child is your evidence and your bond a product of your common law relationship or conjugal relationship. You got it going, man. You put them together. <laughs> so when you are filling out the form, the officer is looking to establish the genuineness of this relationship by looking at your shared accommodation. Is there a sleeping arrangement where you guys actually share the same place and you sleep in the same place? Of course, you don't need to prove your sexual relationship. When I say sexual relationship, explicitly, as I was watching on 90 Day Fiancé, and somebody asked, hey, I want to prove my common law relationship with my fiancé in Africa. This is a white person, you as one woman. He said, look, we've been doing all kind of blow job. Oh, that's so sorry, DJ. We've been doing all kind of thumb on video call. I have all of that. Sometimes I go, I don't wear anything. I <laughs> Can I take pictures of that? And yeah, me and my, my, we do it on Skype. Can I take pictures of that and show the officer? I said, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute, man. Some things are for the bedroom. It, you, know, you, you don't send that to the visa officer. <laughs> the woman wanted to go and show all her things that she's been doing. Evidence. Say, yeah, you see, you want evidence? Say, me and him, we've been looking. We've been, we've been, we've been knocking, we've been, we've been knocking over the phones. <laughs> Avec. You didn't hear that one from me, eh? so please don't go and print pictures of you and him. <laughs> anyway, you can also go ahead and show even a lot more evidence, especially if you're from countries where visa refusal is more higher, like Africa. 
In Africa, you know, we have challenges with so many things when it comes to data. You may be living with a person, no lease agreement. You may be living with a person. No phone bill, no utility bills with your names on it. No, nothing is being mailed to your house. It goes to a postal office. Well, if your names are registered to the postal addresses, you can get approved. That's great. So you have to be a lot more creative to add a lot more evidence to show that you are actually. This is why if your partner is out there, it's better time he starts sending you money. And you, you make sure he gets all the record from whichever financial institution is using to wire the money to you and use that as evidence when necessary. Of course, you could even go an extra mile by also adding a photo collage of your relationship. A photo collage simply means an assembling of the best of your photos showing that this is actually the union between or the relationship between me and my common law partner. It could be sometimes pictures when you wear your asthma jerseys together because we two are asthma fans. And we're chopping love together. You know what I mean by that? You see, sometimes some people post some pictures, Asna, Chelsea, you know, just enjoying, matching, matching clothes, you know, nice photos here and there. Sometimes you guys are riding together, enjoying yourself in a car. You have a photo, you and your partner. You know, sometimes you go on a date, sometimes you go on vacations, or you go spend time together and you have pictures of all of that record. You can build them up. Sometimes you're just spending a good, good time in bed or home. Like in a romantic situation, but not explicit. Maybe you two together just, you know, like, remember the officer's job is to assess the genuineness of that relationship. Your job is to prove to them that this is indeed a genuine relationship which fits or meets the common law criteria. If an officer has reason to believe that the relationship was entered into, with the intention of procuring an immigration status in Canada, they may want to refuse the application and eventually or possibly ban the common law applicant for a period of five years for possibly immigration fraud or something else. So you want to make sure that when you're using this, you actually know what you're doing. Now, this video is also not an excuse for you not to go and marry your partner. Of course, there are people who may choose to go and marry and easily use a marriage certificate or Islamic law, uh, a marriage certificate or Christian law, whichever one, or civic marriage certificate, that's even better. But if you find yourself in unique situations where you don't really feel like you want to take it to that level, but you still know you have a general relationship, then this video could be very useful for you. It's also not a video to be abused. Remember, if you abuse this by actually faking things that are not there and they find out, there are consequences, and I just told you that. All right. Social or societal perception of the two as a couple could also help. In other words, how do people perceive your relationship? So it's possible that your social media stuff about you and your partner could help. Maybe when people go online, they see evidence of you two together, where you've actually listed a person on your profile, and sometimes on birthdays and stuff, people celebrate you two together. You could just make a nice screenshot of that and print it and add it. You know, I'm just giving you ideas, by the way. They, they are just talking about society's perception of your union or your relationship. Is there any way you have some affirmation? An affirmation means confirmation or support or approval from society or witnessing from society. Are there moments you guys have done some things together in society that actually sends that signal that these two are in a relationship? Have you done stuff together? You can think of them and then use them. The idea here is to prove that you are actually in a common law relationship. If you live in countries where you file taxes together, there is an option where you can file tax together as joint couple. For example, when I file taxes, I file with my wife and that what we call the MJA, Married Joint Account. All right? We file together as an MJF, Married Joint Something Something. Yeah, that's what we file as a couple. We file together. So as a common law, you're also allowed to do that. Which country you live in? Where do you live? Are you guys allowed to file taxes at the end of the year? If yes, do you file with your partner, your common law partner? If yes, do you have a proof of that? Maybe you're in Europe. You've been filing with your common law partner that you've been living with. You could also add that as a proof that, hey, we've been filing our taxes together, blah, blah, blah. The idea here is proof, proof, proof. Photos, evidence, anything to prove. Just don't go and show them. Photo. No, 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 don't go and show them. Photo. You know what I mean? 
Let somebody say the good. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, now, when you are filling out your visa for, remember, you can actually sponsor your, your partner in different ways. Some people are actually planning to use this to migrate together as visitors visa holder or work permit holders or coming to study. Maybe you are coming to study, you have a common law partner, you both want to come in so long as you meet that requirement, it would carry the same weight as somebody who is also married and is proving that, all right? But there is also a situation where you could be living in Canada and you want to sponsor your partner to come join you under the common law partner thing. So you want to sponsor them to come maybe on a work permit or on a visitor's visa or as permanent rest, they want to sponsor them to come as well. So long as you can actually build your evidence, great, you're good to go. Just give it a try. Right? People get it all the time. It's about the how water tight your evidence will be. There is a document you are likely to fill, and that document is called the Form IMM5409E. If somebody could write it down, I really appreciate that. I'm accused, I've been accused of repeating myself too many times, so help me out by writing some of the things down there, especially when I mention some key things there. There is an immigration form. Especially if you are using the old portal, there is an immigration form you will be required to actually sign and make a declaration if you are using what we call the common law option to prove your relationship with your partner. That form is called IMM, which stands for immigration, that's the abbreviation for the form, IMM, IMM, okay, 5409E. E is a small letter, IMM 5409E. You are likely going to be, the moment you select common law, you're likely to get that document. You know, you have to fill it out. It may just auto-generate and you may have to fill it out. Based on the answer you provide at common law, it will pull it out for you. And when you, when you post it out for it, there are three or four sessions under it, okay? I have it right in front of me. So. That is why I said it's going to be added on my YouTube channel when I actually edit this video later and put it on today, right? There are four different categories. See where I have highlighted? Uh -huh. These are the four areas I'm going to talk about. Number one, have, do you have, uh, you have jointly signed a residential lease or a mortgage or purchase uh, an agreement, purchase agreement related to a residence? So that's the one I talk about. They will check that. You have to check yes if you have that. Because you have to tell them which of the evidences you are using. Are you using lease agreement, one year cohabitation, or a purchase agreement, one year? If yes, you check that box. B, or you are using a jointly owned property other than your residence where you live. Jointly owned property. You have a property. It could be a house. It could be an asset. It could be anything. If yes, you check the second one too. Then the third one. You have joint, you have a joint bank account or a trust or a credit union or a charge card like a credit card. Maybe you have a credit card which is joint. Your, your partner has a complementary card. You also have a supplementary card or your partner has a card and you have a, a supplementary one. Supplementary means your partner could be the main applicant or holder of the card but may authorize the bank to issue you a copy. You have that. In fact, I have one with my wife. She has one I house. I have a card with my bank. I told my bank to issue one to my wife. Whatever she uses, I'm the one who gets charged for it. She also has one. I also have my name on it. Whatever she, I use, she, her account gets charged with it. We call that a charge card, and right? It, it, mostly for people who are in a joint relationship, right? So you could also use that as an evidence. And then finally, if you have declared your common law union under a Canadian law through taxation. That's why I said if you're in a different country and you do taxes, you could. So you see, all the options that will be provided, you have to check which of them actually fit your situation. And remember, extra evidence could always be a plus for you from, from countries where we have extremely higher or, uh, visa refuser. Now, it could be super easy for you if you're applying from Europe to come to Canada or say USA or some countries, just because like, it's much easier to prove things when you live with people, right? You, you get child benefit. There are letters that come to the house. There are mails coming to your house. But like places like Ghana, where I am, like we can't even deliver water to my house well. See, I fire service already if you find my house. So that place, we need a lot of creativity to actually meet some of this requirement. You know yourself, this is on common law. And if anybody has questions, please post them down there. Otherwise, feel free to use this. Now, somebody may, may be thinking, so Choco, 
I don't have any of these evidence. All I have is pictures, text messages, WhatsApp messages, video calls, blah, blah, blah. It may not make the cut. It may not meet the requirement. The first thing the officer is going to look for is a proof of one year cohabitation. And it must be continuous. Not you live with a person for three months, then you go away. You come for another three months, you go away. You must be able to show it. And the easiest would be a lease agreement with both of you, your name on it, or things being delivered to that address with your name, bills, everything going to that address, your name, your name. You guys have evidence, you know. If possible, you even have both families in photos. Your family, your parents, your siblings, his parents, everybody, you know, in a family photo like that. And he put all those inscriptions or annotations, what we call annotations there. Me and my dad and my mom. My partner and his dad and his mom and siblings, you know. Suppose, cheese. <laughs> right? The idea here is evidence. Evidence, evidence, and evidence. Evidence, evidence, and evidence. If you have this, you may be able to bring your partner with you without a marriage certificate. Remember, if the officer finds out that this was used with the intention of just getting an immigration, there was no real common law relationship, it could easily be flagged as an immigration fraud. There are people who may do this, trying to enter into a relationship, sponsoring people, unless they don't find out, if they find out, it's a big deal. If you did enjoy this, Make sure you share. My name is Chuck Meloni and make sure to follow me on YouTube as well. I love you. Peace. We don't need more money. We need more wisdom. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.